Turn to the book of Genesis, in the 14th chapter. How many of you have someone that you know that you dearly care for that at one time had got started with Jesus has gone the wrong way. And I got this problem in myself. I said, oh, well, they just weren't called. They just weren't something, you know, the heck with them, let them burn. Maybe we need, if we're going to fill this house, we might just have to change our attitude and right. get a little more loving, a little more worried about those or concerned about those that are gone the wrong way. Amen. Abraham took Lot with him in the first place. He must have really loved Lot because he disobeyed God and took Lot with him. Right. Amen. Amen. Took old Lot with him. He must have thought there was really something in that boy. Yeah. Or he wouldn't have took him with him. Amen. Yeah. And he got in trouble with Lot. The Lot gave him trouble. And so they got along down the trail a ways and Lot's herds got too big, you know, and they had the big fight and everything. The herdsmen are fighting and, the, and the, they had to separate from each other. And, and Lot took the purtier ground and, the, and Abraham took the rockier ground. Hmm. Sometimes the rockier ground is the better place to be. Amen. Amen. I'm in the will of God, you're better off on a rocky place than you are out of the will of God in a lush, plentiful place surrounded by the devil's people. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. And so old Lot, he goes down to Sodom and get hooked up down there. Amen? He's down in, he, is, he is, instead of sitting and anchored in faith on uh, uh, Sunday morning, he is Saturday night over at the first church of the open bottle right across the street. You know? Now, we say, well, I, I, I done went out and, and I saved this guy or this girl. I, I, I brought that soul out of a, a perdition once. I brought him back into the kingdom and they went back to the devil again. Uh -huh. Well, if we go through this thing with Abraham and Lot, uh, he goes to get him a couple times. He, he, he begs for him. He pleads for him. He carries on something crazy trying to save this guy. And it looks like when it all got over, believe it or not, I think Lot made it. He might have been a professional backslider, but he still made it. Amen? So sometimes it's worth the effort. It's better that somebody makes it into heaven smelling a smoke than going to hell forever. Amen? Amen? The just scantly. He tells us in the fifth chapter of Corinthians. So, it came to pass, and I'm just going to read a little bit of this and comment on it. It came to pass in the days of at the Plackle, <laughs> whatever, all these kings, these, these five kings and all this stuff, that they went in and, uh, and they attacked Sodom and Gomorrah, amen? They all got together. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to talk about it because I couldn't read all the names I've had to. They went in and they attacked Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen? Amen. And guess where Lot was? Right in the amongst of it, right? And so, as they went into Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot got caught. You stay around that junk long enough and you're going to get caught. You sit in amongst them and you act like you're holy, holy, holy when you're amongst the devils. Sooner or later, the kings of the enemy are going to come in and you're going to get caught. Amen. And then you'll say, why am I down in the jailhouse now? <laughs> why, why me? I'm a good Christian. You stay away from bad companions. Amen. Amen. You be a light. And yet, you can't let the soot rub off on you. Hallelujah. Amen. You be a light, but you can't get so close to their fire, you get singed. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go to verse 8. And there, there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the kings of Adam and the kings of Zelbim and the king of Bel and the same as Zor, and they joined together with them in the valley of Sidon. And there the Chalodomer the king of Elam and 
Tidel, the king of the nations, and Aphel, the king of Shear, and Arach, the king of Esla, and four kings with five. And the vale of Sodom was full of slime pits. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And they were remained fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals. And they went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's bro, uh, son-in-law, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. Uh-huh. So the five kings come. All these, this alliance came. And they took what was inside of the memorial. It says, when it says victuals, that means they took all their food. Amen. That's an old word for supplies. And they took all their food and all their goods and all their gold and all their silver and all their good stuff. And when they, and when they got to fight and they got down by the slime blitz, they got mired down in, in the tar. Oh, Lord, God help you. You get mired down in the tar. You get down in the tar of this world, get that stuff stuck to the soles of your feet, you can't hardly get it off. Amen. Amen. You get this stuff all over you. Amen. And Lot was captured and they took him. Because he had been in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. Amen. He might have loved God, but he was in the wrong place. You got to be careful where you're at. You got to be careful who you're with. You got, and yet, old Abraham. He cared for his relative. Some of you got relatives that need to get in church. Some of you got relatives that need to get saved. Some of you got relatives that might have started on a path, but they're a long way from where they belong. You need to be an Abraham. Amen? You need to be an Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother, and this was his brother, son-in-law, was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house and 318 and pursued them into Dan. You, we ain't doing it. We're not being an Abraham. We're not mounting up our army and going after them. We're just letting them sit in the slime. Amen. Abraham immediately mounted up and went after them. So what if they get mad at you? So what if they hate you forever? You at least tried to get them into the kingdom of God and save their eternal soul. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, persuade them into Horeb, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and he brought back again his brother Lot and his goods, and the woman also, and the people. So he went and got it. He went out and got the whole bunch out of trouble, hoping that maybe the Sodomites had turned the right way. You might go get your brother that's gone astray and bring all his friends and see if somebody out of the bunch might get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and amount to something. You never know who God is calling. Amen. You never know. Somebody, look at you. Oh, yeah. We are some of the most unlikely of souls to be in the kingdom. Right. Amen? Right. We, We've been some real doozies. Amen? And the king of Sodom went to meet him after return from the slaughter of the Chaldemar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Siva, which is in the king's dale. And Melchizedek, here's something that gets a little added meat right in the middle of it. King of Salem brought bread and wine and was a priest of the Most High. Melchizedek representing God. King of the Most High came forth. Hallelujah. Representative God. There are a whole lot of things I can say, but some of them think this is Shem. I'm not sure. But it represents Jesus Christ. Was a priest of the Most High. He blessed him, and he bl blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered these enemies into thy hand. And... Gave him a tithe of all. Abraham tithed on the spoil. Abraham tithed unto God. Clear back then. So, good old Lot gets saved by Abraham. Abraham helps him out. Abraham gets him out of trouble. Amen. Where does he go? 
The dirty, no good rat went right back. So back lot goes right down to Sodom again. How many have we pulled out and, and, and wouldn't by that time eat you just about fed up with it? You got your army together. You went down there and you plucked them out of the fire. Uh-huh. Ain't you about fed up with them? Yes, Lord. I'm sick and tired of why, you brought them in, you slapped the devil out of them, you did everything you could think of, and here they want to go back to Sodom. Amen? Hallelujah. So now we've got to go over to chapter 18. We go back to a whole different thing, and Ishmael, that's a whole other mess there. That's a mess Abraham got into himself. He didn't always have all the faith he should either. Amen? And Yahweh appeared to him in the plains of Merim and sat at the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and they saw them, and he ran to meet them from the tent door, and he bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Yahweh, I now I have found favor in thy sight. Pass not away, I pray thee, from my servant, thy servant. <coughs> Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I'll fetch a morsel of bread. And comfort your hearts after that you have passed on, for therefore you have come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou had said. And Abraham hastened unto the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three mazes of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd, fetched a fat, tender calf, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. He took butter and milk, the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them, and under the tree they did eat. But here Abraham served it up to Yahweh himself, Yahshua Messiah, served up meat and milk and butter and bread. And it it's good enough for God, it. You see these Taurus, 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 say, well, Abraham kept that law. We know he didn't keep the law. He was eating meat and milk at the same time, right there. You can see it. But he did. There's one thing he did do. He paid his tithes. Right. He ate meat and milk in the same meal, but he paid his tithe to God, to the priest. Hallelujah. Amen. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough. He took butter and milk, the calf which he dressed, and he set it before them, and he stood by them and under the tree, and they ate. My Jesus, Hallelujah. Yahweh God. Hallelujah. The pre-incarnate Christ sat down and ate meat and milk and bread together, put butter on it, and slopped it up, and boy, he liked it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I can eat dinner and be happy. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it, the tent door which was behind them. And Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. It ceased to be with Sarah after men and women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure. So the Lord came down and visited, and they're going to have a little visit here. I'm going to just summarize that. He says, no, Ishmael. He says, might Ishmael live before you? He'd already made the Ishmael mistake. And uh, he said, no, Isaac will be thy son. From Isaac shall the nation of Israel come. From Isaac shall it come. He's the chosen, the elect, and the ordained. Amen. Amen. For I know him that I will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring forth Abraham, which he hath spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I go down and see whether I have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood before the Lord, Yahweh. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? He's pleading with God. God! Will you kill the righteous with the wicked? Will you destroy them? Abraham's hoping that there's more than one. And Abraham said, For 
peradventure. There be fifty righteous when the seed. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for fifty righteous which are therein? Lord God, isn't in Iowa City, ain't there at least fifty righteous? Are you gonna send a lightning bolt and destroy all them? The righteous with the wicked? That's what he's talking about. That be far from thee to do this matter, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and what the righteous should be of the wicked, that far as there be, shall not the judge all the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous win the city, then I will spare all the places for their sakes. Hallelujah. You know the reason God hasn't dropped a bomb on Oxford, Iowa? This church. That's why the tornado hadn't blown the place away. This church. Because there are a few righteous still standing in his sight. Amen. Amen. And Abraham said, Behold, I will take up the need to speak unto the Lord, which thou but dust and ashes. Abraham says, I ain't much but dust. Parventure, shall they lack five or the fifty righteous? Will thou destroy the city? If the lack of five in the city, if I find the forty-five, I will not destroy it. Hallelujah. I find 45, I won't destroy it. And he spake again, yet again. Parventure, there shall be 40 among thee. And he says, I will not do it for the 40's sake. And he said to him, Oh, not let the Lord be angry. I will speak. Parventure, there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I'll not do it for 30. And he said, Behold, now I have taken on me to speak unto the Lord. Parventure, shall there be 20 found? He says, I'll do it not for 20. We're getting close to our numbers. And he said, Lord, let the Lord be angry. I will not speak ye but this once, part venture. Ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's not going to destroy it for the sake of ten. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord went his way. And as soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Two angels came to Sodom that evening. I'm just going to tell the story. And they looked around. There weren't 50. There weren't 25. There weren't 30. There weren't 10. And their nature of the men in the street was so perverted and the angels were so pretty that they wanted the angels and they wanted to have their way with the angels in a sexual manner and they wanted to lay men with angels hallelujah and Abraham had two sweet good looking virgin daughters I mean, Lot did. And Lot said, here, take my daughters. He had so much respect for the angels, he's willing to throw his daughters out there and let them become trash. But the men didn't want women any longer. They were turned over perverse desires and they wanted men. God warned Lot and said, get out of there. How many of you sat in a place that you were warned? God said, get out of that mess you're in. Get away from it. And yet, he liked it so well. Listen. He'd been visited by angels. He knew they were angels. And he liked the perverse city life so much. They said, I'm not going to, please don't send me out on the plain like where Abraham is out on that rocky ground. Let me go to, if I'm going to go somewhere, at least let me go to a little city. It's just a little city. I want to have just, I want to keep just a little bit of it. I'll serve you, God, but don't take mine. I want to go to a little city. I don't want to get out on the rocky plain where I'm clean and naked. I got... Talk to it. 
to his son-in-laws. Now, the, the girls weren't married yet. They were betrothed. They had not consummated the marriages as yet. Talked to his son-in-law. Said, come on, boys. We're going to take you and your future wives. We're going to get out of here. We're going to go to that other city. God said we can go there. You see, there's a permissive will of God and the perfect will of God. The perfect will is to get out of the mess. He'll permit you to carry some mess, but he ain't happy about it. Lot talked to his wife. And the two girls and the wife said, we'll go. But the son-in-law said, no, we'll stay here. We like it. We like it. We're enjoying this place. Lot, his two daughters, walked out of there with his wife. And fire and hail and brimstone come from heaven, destroyed the city. And his wife looked back. Don't look back on your sin. Don't go about lusting after where you've been. Get it out of your mind. Get it away from your life or you'll turn into a pillar of salt and it's done for you. And those pillars stand there to this day. But Lot escaped. I'm not saying he lived a righteous, perfect life after this. Nor that his daughters were terribly sanctified. Means that they bewitched him into sleeping with them. Created two nuisance countries. Moab and Ammon. Remember that. Moab and Ammon. Big problems. But even with all this trouble. Even with all the trouble that was around Abraham, or, or a lot, Abraham cared enough to get him out. And it looks like Lot actually made it. He might be sitting on a tar paper shack on the edge of heaven, but I think he's there. Right. And if it hadn't been for Abraham caring for his relative, caring for his loved one, he'd have fried. Well, number one, he'd been in captivity and never got loose and never had anything the first time. The second time, he would have fried like a fish on the grill when Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed. But because of the love of his brother, he was saved. This is a serious message. This is a serious message. Oh, I don't want to ask so-and-so to come back to church. Why? We, him, we got in a big fight. Well, so what? Huh? He hates me. He really don't hate you. He hates what you represent. Amen. He really don't hate you. He just needs a little boost. A little help. Amen. There's a bunch of lots out there. We got to, we, we are, I believe we are the called out ordained ones. We are the Abrahams. We got the faith. Some of us had some stumblings. Abraham had stumblings. We got to the point, I'm to the point that I can take the knife and stick it in Isaac's chest. You got to be at that point so you can reach. Move to the New Testament. Go to the book of James. To the fifth chapter. Thirteenth verse. If any among you be afflicted, let him pray. If any marry, let him sing psalms. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of of the Lord Jesus. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. 
The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What was Abraham doing when he talked to God? He was praying. Talking to God, praying is talking to God. We don't always have him standing in front of us in the flesh like Abraham did, but we got the same access because the veil of the temple is open. We always go in the Holy of Holies. Elijah was a, a lot. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. He prayed again, and the earth gave rain. Heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. Brethren, let me get this to you. Brethren, what does brethren mean? Why do I say Brother Doug, Sister Tana, Brother Doug, Brother John, Brother Steve? Why, why do I call you brother? Because we are brothers in Christ. Brothers are those ones who are in the church. They are the body of Christ. Brethren. This is a very important word right there that lets you know what it's referring to. Brother, if any of you, we're not talking about the slime gutter drunk that's been that way all his life. We're not talking about the rank sinner. That, we're talking about the one that's been in the church is a brother and do err from the truth. He's gone the wrong way. And one convert him, that means bring him back from the error of his ways, save him once again, let him know that he hath converted the sinner from the error of his ways, shall save a soul from death. What death? Second death. And hide a multitude of sins. responsibility to be an Abraham. We are, and you are, in a church that is steeped in truth. We teach the scripture the way it's written. We teach the apostolic truth of teachings of the apostles and of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see those that erred from the truth. You're to put forth an effort like Abraham to go get them. Bring them in. Let the Spirit of God once again touch them. Convert them means to change them. Save a sinner from hell and blot out a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. Abraham cared enough for a lot that he'd do just about whatever it took. That's the way we need to be. Do whatever it takes. Amen. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.